Bye-bye. Good luck to you. Thanks. Bye, Bill. Despite her fan club's wishes this morning, good luck has been hard to find for Portland's Tanya Harding. No one has ever doubted her ability, but many wonder how she can keep finding the unlucky side of life. If anyone was going to suffer equipment trouble during competition, it always seemed to be Tanya. Earlier this year, a skate blade came loose during her Skate America performance. Then here at the National Championships in Phoenix, her halter top broke. Then there were the untimely falls, like this one at the 93 National Championships. And then the ultimate in bad luck just two months ago, when she received a death threat before a performance on her home rink and had to have security escort her outside. Nothing close to that this morning when she arrived at the airport, but still bad luck seemed to find her. She just barely made her flight. Good right now. Um, gosh, I had problems with my luggage. I had problems with the metal. But let me tell you, I'm gonna go. But there. somehow Tanya has always found a way to rebound from the bad starts, the unlucky bounces. Like in 1991, when she became the first American woman to land a triple axle in competition, she went on to win the national title. There's been a lot of hardships, and uh, again, determination, willpower. I'm gonna do it. I'm. I can. Somehow or another, I'll make it, and, and she does. <laughs> and now, with her asthma seemingly under control, Tanya's determined to reach those heights again. Um, yeah, everything's going good. My asthma's good. Um, I feel good about my training. My coaches feel good about my training. I skated last night at 11 o'clock till 1 o'clock, and things are on. Did a perfect program, so. Adding to her competitive spirit is a comment from defending national champ Nancy Kerrigan, who said Tanya is easy to beat. The judges are going to do what's right, and if I do a clean program and Nancy does a clean program, I'm going to win. How about her comments, though, that you're easy to beat? We'll see. <laughs> and what Tanya would love to see after she gets to Detroit are those elusive two Thank words, you. good luck. Ron Carlson, Channel 2, Sports. You know, just a, I'm a little shaken up, I mean, because I really don't, you know, know anything about really what's going on. Um, you know, the person, I guess, got away and is still out there. And supposedly this evening, they were, like, chasing somebody around the arena. I don't know anything really about who or what or why or anything like that. But it just scares me a little bit. And, you know, I just, you know, I just want to feel safe myself. About nine hours later than most everyone had thought, Tanya Harding finally made it home. Hi, Dad. Hi, baby. Hi, it was great, babe. It wasn't long before Tanya was answering questions about last week's attack on fellow skater Nancy Kerrigan. Tanya had been questioned by the FBI. They talk to everybody, and they, they're doing mm -hmm. um, like a, let's say a thorough investigation to try and find the man who did it. Without the competition of Kerrigan, Harding won the national title and a trip to the Olympics by a wide margin. Naturally, Harding was thrilled, but also a little disappointed. I have had my hopes up for, you know, the longest time now competing against Nancy and, and proving to everybody that I am as good as her and better. And I didn't get that chance, but I will get that chance at Olympics, and I will prove to everyone that I am number one. The attack on Kerrigan brought home to Tanya just how vulnerable a public figure can be. The surroundings in Detroit suddenly took on a frightening tone. You know, you have a little bit of things in the back of your head going, well, are you really safe or are you not? Um, you know, this happened to you and all this stuff, but I had to forget about it. And I mean, I went there to do a job and, you know, I had to just put it out of my mind and just do it. But security is now on Tanya's mind. Her every move tonight shadowed by the big bodyguard in the trench coat. Jerry Murphy, Channel 2 Sports. I feel really bad for what happened. I feel really fortunate that it wasn't me, um, you know, but I have had my hopes up for, you know, the longest time now competing against Nancy and, and proving to everybody that I am as good as her and better. And I didn't get that chance, but I will get that chance at Olympics and I will prove to everyone that I am number one. That'll be Olympics, and let me tell you, I'm going to whip her butt. <laughs> Training will go as is. You're excited about getting back to the ice. Uh, maybe take a day off, or what? What are your plans? Um, right now, just because of everything that's going on, I, I just plan on training. Your own Tanya Hart.
In many ways, Tanya Harding's life has been a dream come true, performing in front of cheering hometown fans, a victorious national skating champion. But the dream came after decades of hard work and a life that hasn't been easy. She was raised in a middle-class family. Seen here at 15 years old, Tanya had been skating most of her life at Clackamas Town Center's ice rink when officials there threatened to close it down. We have no place else to go if we lose this rink, especially for me. This is the most important time in my life. Just four years later, she would be competing for the U.S. skating title. She became the first woman to land a triple axle jump and that landed her the national title. Oh, isn't that great? But disappointments and confrontation followed. Harding went back to her first coach, firing Dodie Teachman, who helped her win the U.S. Skating Championship. I feel relieved. I'm glad to be off the roller coaster. You know, um, I am. I wish the best for Tanya. A few days later, at this intersection in Clackamas County, according to police reports. Harding pulled a baseball bat out of her pickup truck during a confrontation with another motorist. My information that uh, Miss Harding had uh, uh, knocked the glasses off the, the gal's face and the gal had hit her, you know, hit her back. Harding apologized. She eventually rededicated herself to tougher workouts in an effort to take her skating to a higher level. Everybody won't think of me as just an athletic skater. They'll also think that I'm artistic, and that's what I really want. I have no excuses or anything. I, I feel really good, and I think everybody's going to be proud of me, at least I hope so. A banner marking the home of Tanya Harding still hangs over the Clackamas Town Center ice rink, even as the shadow of an investigation hangs over the latest accomplishments of the skating star from Portland. At Clackamas Town Center, Bob High, Channel 2 News. We can't talk about the specifics, sure. and uh, you know we're just as anxious to talk to you guys as you are to us, and there'll be more in a few days. Yeah, hopefully. How are you feeling right now? It's been a long week, but we're feeling okay. Yeah. Any plans, at, at least for the near future? As far um, as hopefully practice? to get some rest, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> really. You guys too, huh? Yeah, yeah See you later. Well, thank you. Tanya Harding walked into the Clackamas Town Center ice rink shortly after midnight. They feel really loose. I've lost weight since I've been off. <laughs> Getting back on is what Tanya intended. Her coaches planned a light workout, a limbering up session to work out the kinks of a week-long absence from the ice. I really wanted to come and skate. I mean, when I don't skate, it's just not me. Um, I found I kind of felt lazy all week because I didn't do anything. Um, and it just feels really good. Rollins said it helped to keep Tanya on the ice for 45 minutes, but the minutes turned to over an hour, and much to her coach's surprise, Tanya decided to practice her jumps, too. It didn't take long before the U.S. champion showed that championship form. Excellent. Um, yes, good job! Oh, I didn't expect Tanya to jump today. She, she wanted to jump. She's like a racehorse that wants to run, and... Uh, the triple flip she just did was very exciting. The 45-minute session turned into a practice which lasted almost an hour and a half. 1.30 in the morning when she finally came off the ice. It felt really good. and I mean, Diane didn't want me to do flip and lots, but I told her, I go, well, come on, Diane. I mean, why don't we just do it? And she's like, well, okay. And I did the flip, and then um, I wanted to do the less. And she's like, no, let, let's just call it a night. And I'm like... Man, come on, I mean, let's just do it. So I did it, and she's like, okay, now are you done? And I'm like, yeah. The practice served two purposes, the beginning of her Olympic preparation, and clearly a diversion from the week-long onslaught of accusations, rumors, and charges surrounding Harding and her ex-husband. It's been really, really hard. I mean, it's just kind of another thing I have to get over, and, you know, I may not be the normal figure skater image that everybody wants me to be but I'm my own person and I mean I'm, I may be a little rough around the edges sometimes but overall I think I'm a good person and I think there's a lot of people out there that do like me. Everybody's been great and I just hope that everybody still believes in me. 
Lou Gallows, Channel 2 News. I knew you were supposed to skate last night uh, again, and that, that kind of... Well, yeah, well, so. you're going to the games, there's just no doubt about it? Well, I sure hope so. You hope what? I hope so. Not answering your questions. I'm tired of answering your questions because I Excuse can't. Me. Tanya Harding reaches the boiling point. Questioned by a tabloid TV show reporter on her way to her first public skating practice since the attack on Nancy Kerrigan. I'm not answering your questions, I said. Leave me alone for right now. Harding vents her frustration to her coaches, expressing outrage over the swarm of reporters who've been following her for the past week. Finally, Tanya Harding is all smiles as she enters the rink joking with fellow skaters, helping younger students. This is Tanya Harding's refuge, the skating rink she's practiced at since childhood, the one place she can escape the legal turmoil she faces. My skating is, is it's my life, and I go out there, and I don't know, it's just, it's an out for me. I, I love skating. Harding lends several triple axles right in view of TV cameras and her fans. <laughs> It's her signature skating move, a way to send a message to the world that despite her legal problems, she's ready to compete. After practice, she agrees to speak with reporters on one condition. No questions about anything that's going on. Under orders from her lawyers, Harding refuses to talk about allegations made by her bodyguard that she helped plan the attack against Kerrigan by placing phone calls to this Boston skating rink, an effort to learn Kerrigan's practice times information which could have helped the alleged hitman get to Kerrigan. I'm as anxious to talk to you guys as, as you are to me and uh, as soon as I know something you'll know something and you guys will probably know before I know. <laughs> Michael Hanna, Channel 2 News. No way. Tanya Harding has become the most famous Olympic contender in the world. A day after more allegations by her bodyguard and a continuing investigation into Kerrigan's attack, an army of local, national, and international media showed up at practice. Let her mother through. Mom, you my mother through, Even Harding's mother came to cheer her on. The two have had a stormy and allegedly abusive relationship, but today all seemed forgiven. I saw her and I'm like, wow, my mom's here. So I came out and got her and took her inside so I could talk to her. <laughs> and she told you anything about whether or not she, she was involved? She told me she was not guilty. Harding has been battling a cough, fatigue, the media, and an ongoing investigation. However, it doesn't seem to be affecting her skating. She fell once during practice, but hit several of her trademarks, the triple axle. I'm skating good. I, 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 from a one to 10, I rate myself a seven right now. But at the Olympics, I hope that it will be about a 10. Despite Harding's eagerness to demonstrate to the world that she's the best, the big money is not rolling in. Nancy Kerrigan has already received lucrative endorsements from Campbell Soup and Reebok, while Harding hasn't heard from anyone. I'm not concerned about it at all. The, mo the top concern, the top priority is, you know, my training and getting this all over with so I can get on with my life. And I don't care if I wasn't to get one endorsement. I just want to be able to skate and follow through with my dream. Today, she seemed content to put on a show before the fans and the cameras.